welcome to Learn and Flutter. Now this is section five. If you notice, we were doing section four, and I was doing basic stuff, and we were covering like containers and rows and that sort of thing. And the last example, we looked at the image widget. Um, image widget, and we could continue. We could try and make that better. Or we can put um, use a list box or a scroll view to put our images in and that sort of thing, or even a table view, right? So we could continue along that line. What we wanted to do in basic is sort of get an idea of how to use basic widgets or just how to construct widgets or what a widget is, a widget is like. But there are hundreds of widgets in Flutter and where do we draw the line in terms of what is a basic widget and what's not. And I'll show you sort of where I drew the line and why I decided to start section five. And this is on material design. Now in this particular section, which is gonna be all about material design. So you're gonna see uh, why I drew the line at what we've covered in section four as being basics and that's enough. And now we're starting section five on material design. So in part one, we'll look at the material app widget. And to sort of lay the foundation of what this widget does and why we have it, I figure we better, we best we start from some place that most of us might know. And that is web application layout. So let's say you wanted to develop a web application. You know, until you have a certain layout or screen or device to work with. And usually it's, you know, just sort of like a blank canvas. If you write in an HTML page and use the body tag, let us represent the client area and that's all that it is. And now within that, you may start structuring a web application by creating like maybe um, a section for a header and maybe a section for footer. And then you say, well, okay, the rest of it in the middle is sort of the body. And this is a basic typical layout of most web application, right? Or most website, they have a header section and they have a footer with some copyright information or whatever, and then a body. Well, that's nice and dandy, but then you might start sticking in other things like my application name, and usually that is used to navigate back to the home page or landing page. So regardless of where the user is in using your application, what screen or page you're on, they can sort of click on your app name and sort of get back to the big menu or home page, right? Um, something is clearly just says home, um, but then usually because your application might have multiple pages, um, you might have a page title so users know which page they're on. And then you might have some sort of profile button or some buttons on the top right hand side for logging out and those sort of things, right? It might be multiple, I show one button here, but you get the idea. And then down the bottom, like I said, you have things like copyright and maybe some lesser use information or links like about us. Now everybody who comes to your page needs to really check out about you. So you put that sort of thing usually at the bottom that people don't need to access often. And so again, this would be sort of a typical layout for um, web application. Um, you might still go a little bit further and want some more navigation elements. So buttons or stuff, and you might have a left nav. And here you can list some more links or buttons that people can click on. Or you might put some information, it doesn't have to be navigation, it might be some um, details about whatever they're doing in that body area. So if you have a list in the middle for body, then the navigation area might have a little bit of details or the other way around, you might have a list there in the navigation area and as people click on it, the body is updating with the detail. But I just wanted to show you that so you can sort of have um, break up the screen even a little bit more. And so if you can imagine application looking like this with a sort of left nav or left area, um, some layout might put it on the right, or you could combine and do both. Now, I was going to show you a bunch of examples of application or website that uses the same layout, but I'll just tell you, just go to YouTube and look at it. Go to grpc.io and the landing page is gonna look like the very first page we looked at where we just have a header and the body. And then if you navigate through some of the pages, you can eventually end up at one page that looks like the bottom one there, where there is navigational content on both sides. And even the Flutter IO page, I'm gonna show the Flutter Dev page, I'll show you just now. I have that same look at the one at the, of the one at the bottom, but also some of the other pages look like some of the top. So you can combine certainly within your application, you don't have to use the exact same layout. So different pages might use different layout depending on what makes sense. So why am I showing you that? Because like I said, that's one place where we can start. And because that look was so 
um, consistent and was a pattern that most people were using. Then you had frameworks that developed that made it super easy for you to implement that look. Like I'm thinking Boost, for example, um, and um, Bootstrap, Bootstrap. And eventually Angular came around and not only allow you to easily see where is your header and this and that so, so on, but it also take care of the look and feel of your application. That's another thing that I didn't show here. Like, what does what does those button and text box and so on look like? When you transition from one screen to another screen, what does that look like? How easy is it to say that oh, I have several screens or pages and I want to move between them? So you had um, framework that came around to help you do this. Now let's talk about mobile. So when you move to a mobile device, and this is where we're mostly working with, thanks to Flutter, we're going to be able to target uh, web and desktop. And we, I've shown you an example of how you can target the web already. But for the most part, when we do mobile um, Flutter, we're thinking about mobile screens. And so you have a mobile screen, and we can start to do the same thing. We can say that oh, at the top of it, we have a title. We usually put the application name because the user know which application they're using anyway. It's a small screen. We don't have to remind them that they're using our app. If you're doing a game, you might not have, a, you don't want to have a title. You mostly, except if it's some sort of game like, you know, Sudoku or something, you might have a um, title or something up at the top or some ads. But if it's a full screen game, then you don't have that. Um, and then you have the bottom. Um, again, pretty typical stuff. But then you might have some navigational element, right? Some button and stuff that uses me for control. And so you can put a button up to the top. And you usually see this is called the hamburger, um, menu or button and it usually allows you to um, open up more things and on the right hand side you might even put another button just as similar like your profile button so if you open if you have an android phone for example and you open most um, android application like the text application or the phone application they have these dotted the three dot men uh, menu item button on the top right and that usually takes you into something like settings right so that could be more like how you, on your web page you have your profile. So that's how you configure the application as a whole. And on the right, on the left hand side, that would be a button specific to the, like the task you're working on or extra things. Okay. And so you can imagine that clicking on that hamburger menu um, would again allow you to open up some side navigation. And it doesn't have to be navigation. It could be additional information about the screen that you're looking at or the content you're looking at. If I'm doing a database type application where on the main page I'm showing information about the user, maybe clicking on that button gives me some details, some extra information that I did not want to populate on the screen, but I just put it, I put it in the side menu, the nav menu, so that, or some drawer or something. So only who wants it or if they want it, they can get it, right? There are other ways of doing this. Of course, you can do a page navigation to go to a details page, and you might still want to put more navigational elements at the bottom. So you could still have a equivalent of a footer, I'm using air quotes here, but your bottom navigation, and you can put some icons and button there, and each one of these might also represent doing something else or going to another page. But regardless, what I'm trying to show you is some of the same things that we did for web application, we can sort of bring them over to the mobile space, just keeping in mind that we have a smaller screen, so we might hide things and have things animate in and out. And not that you can't do that in the mobile on the web, but you have a little bit more space there. So what does this have to do with Material App Widget? Material App Widget is Google's implementation of um, their material design. So long before Flutter, Google came up with this thing called material design. It was widely used on the web, and you were able to implement a web page or design a web page around the material design. And what is material design really? Material design, um, recommends or specifies some theming, right? What does the entire application look like in terms of the color palette that's being used for things that are active versus not active and so on? Now, I'm not a UI guy or really much into design or color or anything like that. So I don't know everything about how to piece together a good color palette that's pleasing to the eye or anything like that. All the colors I use is to draw your attention. That's it. I really don't know what matches or what conflicts, right? And maybe some of the colors, some of the colors I pick probably hurt your eyes or something, or really upset some people. Hopefully, they're not too upset if they know that I'm not a UI guy. Uh, but material design, um, you know, helps you pick out your color palettes and so on. Phone sizes, weight, the family. 
so that you have a consistent look throughout your application, that every page is using a different font and all this other stuff. And if you decide to change your application font, that it applies it throughout your application. And we're gonna see that as we play around, how we can specify the theme for our application in terms of these things like colors and so on. And then every page or um, where we put on text or whatever, it sort of uses the same consistent color and theme. So we, our application have a consistent look. But it doesn't have to do with just the color that you use for text or the font size, but think of buttons. Buttons have text and colors also and style. Like are they rounded, flat, raised, all these other things, right? Um, animation. One of the things that Google Material Design was popular for is it took the idea of a material seriously. Like if you have a piece of material and you interact with it, it should um, respond in a certain way. So one of the things that most material sort of do is if you press on it, you'll see like a ripple effect or something like that, or it bumps or something like that. Again, this is the idea that oh, what you're interacting with is a material and it can react in a certain way. And so um, they define the animation for that sort of thing and make it very, very easy. So if anyone who's used like Angular, you'd know what um, the animation that Angular allows you to um, add, attach to different elements and so on. And that's also built in here within Flutter to do easy animation, but Material app also have widgets and stuff that they apply it to. So if you think about a xylophone application, it would be nice to have like a virtual, you know, um, peg or something or stick that we can strike our xylophone with, or even when we click on it, wherever we click on it, for example, let's just get rid of stick. So it would be nice for a xylophone application if when you click on one of the buttons or whatever those things are called, um, you could see like a ripple effect. So you, it's visual that somebody has clicked here and depending on where to click, it would ripple out from that location. That would be the source of the ripple, right? Or something that shows that it was clicked here. And so if we were using a material app, we would be able to get stuff like that. And of course, input style, like what is your text input look like? Because besides the font and the weight and so on, what does it look like? I mean, do the labels come at, at the top of the text, below it, to the right of it, whatever, that sort of thing. And routing, remember I talked about how you have an application, you might have multiple pages or views, and you want to navigate um, throughout your application. What, what does that look like? And so they help you solve all these recurring problems. So, so I don't have to solve them, you don't have to solve them multiple times. Um, it becomes a pattern and many more things, right? But I just want to give you an idea of what Material App Widget provides. So let's jump into some code and see where we are. Well, actually, before we jump into the code, I told you that I want to show you why I decided to draw the line here and start with, with Material App. So if you go over to Flutter Dev Web UI and you click on Documentation or Docs and you look at Widget Catalog, and let's zoom in a little bit, and you can see we have these widgets that are categorized into animation and da 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 and basics. And this is where we were looking at before, right? We we're looking at column, container, um, images is what we did last week. Well, icons are easy to use and we're gonna see that pretty soon. Uh, Flutter logo, nothing really interesting there. It's a placeholder basically for those, those two access placeholder. Uh, raise button, I didn't worry about it because we're gonna see buttons soon, rows, and text we've seen a long time. Here's scaffold and app bar. So they put those as basic widgets. But before we can use, so if we were staying with basics, it probably makes sense for us to look at app bar. But before we look at app bar, we have to be able to use scaffold. But before we can use scaffold, we actually need to know what the material design or the native, we will need the material app, right? But we have to do some work to make scaffold work. So it sort of makes sense to just stop fooling around with icon or anything like that because they're so pretty much so easy to use. And just let's start looking at something a little bit more structured now that we have a basic of how to um, just use a widget. So hence why I decided to put it. So if we just click here, for example, and then uh, we're looking for material. So material app, let's see where we can find material app. Da, da, da. Um, it mentioned it, but we don't, oh, there it is, material app. I could have looked, um, thing. but now that we're here, notice what I told you about that layout, right? You see the header here, you see that left, um, left navigation, right navigation, and you see the center body area, and then here is your footer. 
And so you see this many, many places. Even if I go back to the home page, what you see is the header, left nav, body area, and footer. Doesn't have a right nav, but you can see this, this, this sort of pattern and layout occur over and over and over. All right, so let's go back to material app class. It tells you an application that uses material design, which we talk about what material design is a little bit. A convenient widget that wraps a number of widgets that are commonly required for a material design application. It builds upon the widgets app. We don't really care about the widgets app right now. By adding material design specific functionality, such as animated teen, grid paper, and what else, right? And it goes on and talk about the navigation, but there are many other things. So let's jump over here to our code. As you can see, I have my simulator running already. And so I'm here in Learn and Flutter directory. And so we'll make a directory for 05 and we'll call it material design. We're going to our material design directory and let's make part one, however we'll be naming things. I'm not consistent with naming things. And we're looking at, um, what is this material? App widget. Now, if you remember for Flutter, at least the project name should have an underscore. And so this guy should be um, like this. Uh, I don't believe that's all we can do. Dash in the name. All right. So if we cd into that directory, and then we do now before you run Flutter to create an application. If you haven't updated your Flutter recently, please do Flutter upgrade and run that. Now I've upgraded mine already, and I expect that it should come back pretty quickly in Tame though there's nothing to do, um, but it looks like it still want to update something. But I did mine yesterday, and still yet it found some differences. So I'll let that complete, and then I'll create the application. Okay, that completed. So let's do Flutter create. And I explain why I do it this way before. And so this should take about three or four seconds. And it says all done, take about three seconds. And so let's start our Visual Studio Code Editor in this directory, we are already here. And of course we wanna to go to lib and we wanna start with this. And if you look at this, you can see that this is a material app, but we are going to just sort of erase everything. We're not gonna start with that yet until we understand how to use it and play around with it ourselves. And so what we can do is do a state in this widget. And so if you have this stuff installed, like these snippets, um, just sort of type in something like SDL would give you um, the opportunity to do a tap completion. And so we want to do a my app widget. And so we can return a container and that should be fine. So let's start running our code. And we should, this is going to take a while to build. So while that is building, why don't we change this to the material app? Now, where is that material app? So now that we have a material app, there's some stuff that is required. So if we hover over this and we scroll down a bit, it tells you to create a material app, and at least one of home, routes, da da da, -da must be done now. And we're not going to worry about the routes and so on for now, but it tell, tells us that I'll at least home and route. So let's do home. And so home, think of home as exactly what it, it is. If you were writing a web application, you'd have a home page or your landing page. And so that's what home is. And so home is a widget. So um, let's see if we have documentation for home. There we go. The widget for the default route of the application. And again, this is an application, so when it starts up, what should be the first page or widget that you want to show? Remember, everything in Flutter is a widget, so even your page is going to be a widget. So, let's just say that now, for now, we want to do a container as our um, widget for the home. And once we save that, um, it is complaining that we have um, a child with multiple items inside one widget, child list, and so on. So what exactly is it saying? You know, global keys. Well, we're not going to worry the parent of the widget. Let's see. But before we worry about that, let's refresh to make sure that we get an updated um, error message. And it looked like that error message was old. So 
be careful that you might go chasing down the wrong error. So of course, this is a black screen because we don't have anything. But notice we have this thing that says debug, which you can barely see up there. And that's because, well, this is an application that has um, some extra widgets and stuff like it says in the documentation that we might need. We also know that all we can do um, color for our box here, and we can do colors. That blue, for example. Right. Save that, and we should have a blue background. Um, this doesn't look as exciting. You might say, well, we could get the same thing by just using a container without this app widget. Well, I already mentioned some of the benefits of the app widget, including teaming and so on. Well, we can also take a look and see what else is in here. And so you can see this one. It says debug show check mode banner or something like that. And we can set this to, you can imagine this is a Boolean value. And if we set it to false, what we can get is we can have this debug thing removed. And there you go. Right? So we can take care of that right there. Um, what else is in this thing? Let's do this, and so we have builders, and we have color, and we have dark team, and, and so on. There, there's so many things in here that we're going to slowly navigational key and so on route. We're going to go through and see how to set up some of this stuff. Um, there's title. So what about that? Title is of type string. So why don't we set the title? My first half, my widget half, let's go. And we save that, for example. And you're not going to really see anything update on the screen. And we'll get into that later. So this is as much as I want to show you. Our video is already 25 minutes. That's it. Hopefully, you don't have a, any problem with this so far. This is just sort of laying the foundation. If you like what you're seeing, please spread the word. If you like what you're seeing and you haven't subscribed, well, you certainly should. So subscribe and click that bell so you can see when I'm being notified when I post videos and thumbs up and like the video. Take care. Bye. Have a great rest of the day.